In order to properly draw a free body diagram or a beam structure or any spanning structure, we have to properly diagram the framing layout. So here is a simple example. We have a four framing system. We're looking in plan. And we have two columns at the top and the bottom, and then a row in the middle with two more. So this divides us up to, into several different regions. We have beams that surround these, beams that are labeled B1 and are around the edges here, a B2 on the inside, a B2 here, and then girders that support those beams. G1 here, that's supporting a B1 here and here, and a G3 here, that's supporting B2, and a G2 that really is only carrying the deck across here. So the first step that we want to follow is to understand how do we diagram these as a load transfer mechanism? Well, the first thing that we want to recognize is that the deck span indicates that this is a uh, one-way structure, that the loads are transferred in one direction first and then transferring to another. So any load that is placed on this deck, let's say it's in the middle here, can only be channeled to the left and right as we look at it in the plan. Once it gets to the support, that's supporting it. So this deck is comprised of a fluted structure that looks coordinated in plan, something like that. Typically with a steel deck, it may be concrete deck that has rebar, and the reinforcing runs in a particular direction. There are several different ways that we can do this. We'll assume that we have a steel deck and the load is transferred then over to member G3 and B1. Now, because we already know that a, a simply supported beam with a uniform load or a single concentrated load at the middle, if we have a concentrated load here and this is halfway across the span, we'll call this L, this is L over 2. The reaction is going to be half of that on either side. So the same thing's applying here. Now if we had a uniformly distributed load, that would be W times L over 2 instead of P over 2. It's the same thing. So for convenience, what we can do is divide this in half and say that half of the structure on the right hand side, all of that load is being transferred onto member B1. And the same thing is happening with element G3. So that means that B1 is going to get a little bit of concentrated load for every little bit of a distance that we go along its length. In other words, it's a uniform load. So if we were to diagram B1, and we should do this without any calculations at first, just to understand how the loads are transferred. B1 is going to look something like this. So its span is 10 feet. has a support on the left and the right, and it has a load W, depending on what the magnitude of this is. Now, when we look at B1, if I'm looking at it from the right-hand side, looking left in this direction, that means that it's being supported by this column on the left-hand end, known as B2. On the right-hand side, it's being supported by the girder, G1. And that's really important because we need to know where these forces are going to. We need to know what's holding up what. Now we have an element here that's B2. The deck span here has changed direction. So our tributary width in this case is actually split down the middle this way.
So all of these elements that are labeled B2, here, here, and here, are all carrying a li little bit of a distributed load. So this we refer to as a tributary width. It's how much of the deck or the surface is a member responsible for carrying. And typically the tributary width is half of the span in the same way that a simple beam with the concentrated load at the middle, half the load goes to one side, half goes to the other. So B2 looks an awful lot like G1 or B1. So this is member B1. Let's label that so we, we know. And then over here we have B2. So this is the symbol that we use for uniform load. Again, it's a magnitude W. We don't know what it is without doing any calculation on it. But we can still do this diagram. And we see that this also is 10 feet long. And this is our element B2. However, its supports are different. It depends on which B2 we're talking about. If we look at the B2 over here, this would be supported on member G3. If we're looking at the B2 over here, this would be column B2. Or if we're looking at the member over here, this would be column C2. They're all the same, they just have a different support. Over here, this would be G3. Or, for this one, this would be column uh, C2. Or, if we're looking at this one, it would be column B2. Member G2 looks very much the same as member B2, except it's much longer. It's 30 feet long. But it too actually has exactly the same load as member B2 because it has the same tributary width, 5 feet. But its span is 30 feet, and this is G2. G2 is supported at A3, and column D3. Now, if we look at these members labeled, or these supports labeled G1 and G3, that's going to tell us how things are lining up with the element right here. So let's do a diagram for the member labeled G3. Or rather, G1 is where I want to start. G2 is simple because that's just a uniform load. You can almost picture it as an elevation right here with half of this tributary width. So we also have another long beam. This is 30 feet. It's supported only at the ends, so this is on column A1 and column D1. Because the deck is spanning parallel to this beam, 
and this is its direction of span. That means it's transferring its loads only perpendicular to members B1 and G3. So actually G1 does not support any deck directly. This is an opening, so it's maybe a stairwell or an atrium, some sort of penetration in the building. We use this for mechanical shafts as well. So this also has no load. That means that there are no constant or no uniform loads on member G1. However, there are two concentrated loads that come from this B1 and this B1, as we saw back here with G1 right there. So we'll go ahead and put two concentrated loads on here. And that load is coming from member B1. And those are at the third points, not necessarily drawn to exact scale here. So this is 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet. Total span of 30 feet. So member G1 is actually pretty straightforward because of symmetry the reaction that goes to column A1 from member G1 is going to be the reaction of B1 because this is completely symmetry. These will split and go right down this way. The last member is G3. This is the one member that's different than all the others. I guess I gotta leave that right there. So G3 is 20 feet long a little bit longer, or a little bit shorter than the other girders, longer than the beams. One end of G3 is being supported by either column A3 or D3, depending on which we're talking about. And I'm looking in an elevation from the right to the left again. So the length here is 20 feet. We're on column A3. or column D3. At the other end, up here, we're either at column A1 or D1. That depends on the particular member that we're talking about. These have exactly the same loading, so we give them the same designation of G3. Now the loads here are different than anything else. For one thing, this portion of the beam has no load. If you look at the span of the deck, it's going this way, it carries its load up, and it carries its load down. So it all goes either to G2 or B2. This has nothing on the opposite side. We assume it's a spandrel condition on the side. Therefore, this portion has no load. However, we get to the middle. Element B2 is providing a concentrated load. It's supported. B2 is being supported by G3, which is what we saw right here. So this is a concentrated load, the end reaction of element B2. Beyond that, now the deck has changed direction. It's going up and down here. Now it's changed direction this way. That means that we end, <coughs> end up with a distributed load for this portion of the beam. And that distributed load will look very much the same as the distributed load for B1 because the tributary width in each case is only 5 feet. So I have 5 feet times whatever my uniform load is for B1. I have 5 feet times my uniform load for G3 over the last 10 feet of the span. So that's the last piece that we need on here. How far is this W being distributed? 10 feet. Now, 
All of this was done without any calculations. This is simply looking at the structure and laying out the free body diagrams for each element. So this one, last one here was G3. This has to be done, and you have to understand this before you put any numbers for loads. Please make sure you understand this before moving on to load calculations, which we'll do in the next video.